You Lucky Dog is a 1998 Disney Channel original movie about a dog therapist named Jack Morgan and his adventure with a dog named Lucky. Jack Morgan, played by Kirk Cameron, once had the psychic ability to commune with dogs, but as he grew past the age of 14, he lost the ability to do so. He continued, however, playing the role of a dog therapist under the pretense that he could communicate with him psychically. When he is introduced to an old and very wealthy man, Mr. Windsor, and his dog Lucky, he suddenly and inexplicably regains his psychic ability. When Mr. Windsor dies shortly after Jack and Lucky being introduced, Jack finds himself the trustee of Mr. Windsor, bruh, Mr. Windsor's $64 million fortune that has been left to Lucky the dog. Mr. Windsor's family, however, spend the movie trying to take the fortune away from Lucky and Jack by trying to prove that he is mentally incompetent. The movie follows Jack and Lucky as they navigate what a dog does when they suddenly become the most wealthy dog ever as well as the battle between them and Mr. Windsor's conniving family for the $64 million fortune. Now, some review context here. So I decided the other night while watching Diary. So I decided the other night while watching Diary of a Wimpy Kid on Disney Plus with my girlfriend that it would be a good idea for me to go ahead and watch every Disney Channel original movie and then review them for YouTube. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a mouse in my hand, a mic in the shitty green screen. I'm also, if my eyes seem to be wandering at any point during the video, I've got this uh, teleprompter here. That's really just a Chromebook with a teleprompter app on it. And then we're recording into my iPhone. YouTube on a budget. So yeah, anyway, um, I have a very fond memory of watching DCOMs as a kid and thought it would be fun to revisit them. Uh, my Disney Channel viewing era started around 2005 when my family finally got satellite TV. Um... I was worried when starting this series that the DCOMs before my time of Disney Channel would be like grueling and boring to watch, but I was surprised and shocked that when the first one I sat down to actually watch was as good as this one. Um, so I'm excited to get into this review with you all, and thanks so much for watching. Also, quick side note, I believe there are 98 DCOMs on Disney+, Plus, um, which should leave about 10 DCOMs that at least at this moment I can't review because... Um, I mean, they have 98, and there's 108, I believe, according to the D23 website, which is, like, the official Disney fan club site. So let's get into the review. Um, so I broke it down kind of by category here. Uh, so let's start with the plot. This is going to be the longest scripted part of it. You'll get to enjoy my improv rambling afterwards. Uh you Lucky Dog opens with a montage of clippings and articles about a Wonder Boy who is able to psychically communicate with his dog. Jack Morgan, the Wonder Boy, is played by Kurt Cameron, who also played Mike Seaver in the mid-80s sitcom Growing Pains. I've never seen it, but the kid was on like every episode, so some of y'all have seen Growing Pains and know who this guy is. At the start of the movie, Jack is a failing dog therapist. It is revealed that around the age of 14, he lost the ability to commune with dogs, but kept up the lie anyhow. Um, when we are introduced to him, he is asleep at his desk while he should be having a psychic session with the dog. The dog's owners discover the ruse and rush out with their dog while also threatening to shut down Jack's business as the customer is friends with the mayor. After this, a very wealthy man by the name of Mr. Windsor, uh, his driver, Calvin Bridges, played by James Avery. Okay, so Calvin Bridges is played by James Avery. and I, At first, I didn't believe it because I thought he was some other dude who looked just like Uncle Phil. But no, this guy plays Uncle Phil in The Fresh Prince, and you're thinking, what is he doing in a decom? Man's got to work, I guess. The royalties from Fresh Prince weren't keeping him afloat, or he just really loves to act. I don't know. Uh, but, like, this is, this is a 1998, right? So Fresh Prince is either, like just coming to an end or still going while he's doing this Disney Channel original movie. So I don't, I just thought that was funny, but he was best known uh, as Uncle Phil from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Mr. Windsor, his driver, Calvin Bridges, and his dog, Lucky, played by a dog, enters Jack's office, hoping to find an answer as to why Lucky has been feeling so down lately. When Jack and Lucky retreat into Jack's office, he suddenly regains his psychic abilities. Oh, baby, I just realized I'm going to spoil the whole movie for you right now. Okay. Shocked and startled and confused by this, Jack quickly rushes Lucky out of his office. On the way out, however, Jack receives the revelation that there are three hostile presences who reside in Mr. Windsor's home, and that's why Lucky has been feeling so down. Jack relays this to Mr. Windsor and rushes them out the door. We then cut to two weeks later. Dun, dun. 
and Jack is being kicked out of his office space by the city. Apparently, the angry client who claimed to be friends with the mayor wasn't joking. Um, as movers are removing Jack's things from the office, Calvin, Mr. Windsor's driver, Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, enters the office to inform Jack that Windsor has died, and he's also requested his presence at the Windsor Mansion. Jack tries to decline, but Calvin ultimately talks him into going. At the same time, Windsor's family is being read his will by Windsor's attorney, Allison Taylor, played by Chelsea Noble, who was also on Growing Pains and happens to be Kirk Cameron's wife. Keep it in the family. Do you call that nepotism? No, she was already an actor. You wouldn't call that nepotism, would you? Uh, the family consists of Lyle, Margaret, and Reuben Windsor. Uh, so I didn't write this in the script, but Lyle is like... He's like the 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 sneaky sneaky planning type of guy. Margaret is like the dumb rich sneaky type woman. Like if you've ever seen uh, Shit's Creek, she's the mom in Shit's Creek. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, let's go. Uh, and Reuben Windsor. Reuben is the dumb one, so he's just an idiot. And there'll be clips of. He's like my second or third favorite character in this movie. I mean, they're only like five, but he's like my second favorite character in this movie. He's freaking hilarious, but he's like an idiot. He plays it really, really well. Um, um, as they were Mr. Windsor's nieces and nephews and also their next of kin, um, they're understandably upset when Allison reads that they've been cut out of the will. As they're being escorted out of the Windsor mansion, Calvin and Jack arrive. Margaret and Lyle jump to assault Jack before being pulled off by house security. After this, Jack enters the home and Allison, again the lawyer, informs him that Mr. Windsor's entire for Oh my god. Mr. Windsor's entire fortune has been given to Lucky the dog. To facilitate this, the $64 million has been placed into a trust fund. And since Jack impressed Mr. Windsor by being able to sense what Lucky was thinking back in his office, Windsor had requested that Jake be the trustee and executor of the fund in order for it to be spent however Lucky wanted. So, yeah, uh, Mr. Windsor, before he died, they, he took Lucky to go see Jack. Jack psychically communicated with the dog, and so Mr. Windsor gives his whole fortune to the dog, but because Jack could communicate with him psychically, he figures, why not have Jack be the executor? He knows what the dog, he'll know what the dog wants, because the dog will tell him, uh, and so the dog can spend all of the money. In exchange for being the trustee, Jack is tasked with living in the mansion and enjoying Windsor's and Lucky's money. Jack accepts this task and signs some papers. Allison says she'll see him the next day, and she leaves. Jack immediately begins to celebrate and is shown around his new house. Later that night, while Jack is taking a bath in the bathtub the size of my apartment, the kitchen staff lets him know that dinner is ready. In the kitchen, he has some chit-chat with the staff. Um, by the way, one of the cooks is played by the very talented Mary Pat Gleason, uh, who has been in almost everything that I've ever watched, from like Quantum Leap, Saved by the Bell, Shameless, and like countless other shows. Her picture is going to be right here. Like, you've seen this woman. She's in everything. Um, she's unfortunately passed away in June 2020. Rest in peace. Um, you were a big part of my childhood, and you probably didn't even know it. Um, while chatting with the cooks, Lucky enters the dining room, out of Jack's sight. Lucky seems to signal to Jack, and Jack misinterprets the signal, thinking that one of the cooks has asked to go outside. Lucky comes closer to Jack, and he realizes that he's having the thoughts of the dog again. Jack then takes Lucky to talk privately, and Lucky lays, er, and Jack lays down some ground rules, uh, specifically about how Lucky needs to do his best never to get too excited or emotional for reasons that we don't quite yet know. He takes Lucky outside where he does his business, after which Lucky begins sniffing around and becomes very excited when he remembers that he buried a bone in the backyard the other night. Jack tries to calm Lucky down before Jack twitches his neck and falls to the ground. It would appear that when dogs are psychically connected to Jack and then they become excited, they somehow possess Jack's body. The two begin digging for the bone. Oh, the two then begin digging for the bone. Uh, the cooks see this commotion, assume Jack is crazy, and then get the heck out of the house. They quit. They leave. They're not doing this. He's possessed by the devil, they say. Jack and Lucky begin to tear up the house. Meanwhile... Lyle, Margaret, and Reuben, the evil nieces and nephews, meet with a lawyer, Mr. Fister, who explains to them that they can have the Windsor's fortune if they can prove that Jack is mentally incompetent. When they ask if Fister, well, when they ask Fister if he can do this, he says yes, but it will come at a cost. 30% of the fortune. Angrily, they storm out and find themselves in a rundown hotel room. Here they decide that instead of paying 30% to Fister, they can stage an accident happening to Lucky. 
The next morning, Jack wakes up to find that he and Lucky have destroyed the entire house, seemingly forgetting the entire experience. Lucky is offered food by Jack, but Calvin informs him that since Windsor died, Lucky hasn't had much of an appetite. Lucky psychically shows Jack a flashback to the night Windsor died. Lucky had wanted to go on a walk outside, but since it was cold and rainy, Windsor didn't want to. Lucky started to be the cute dog that he is and convinced Windsor to do it. Windsor took a cup of tea and umbrella out to walk Lucky, but just, or just steps out of the house, he collapsed to the ground and died. Pay attention to the cup of tea because that comes up later. After seeing this flashback as a way to console Lucky, Jack offers to take them to the mall at Lucky's request. The three head over to the car and once again Lucky gets excited and possesses Jake for the ride to the mall. It is revealed to us that Lyle, Margaret, and Reuben are following the trio to the mall. Reuben attempts to videotape Jack being possessed by Lucky. After a while of taping and reckless driving, they lose the trio and discover that Reuben hasn't put a tape in the camera and has caught no incriminating footage of Jack. We cut back to the trio. Midway through the ride, Jack snaps out of it. Just after, Allison, call, Allison, the attorney, calls Jack on the car phone to set up a time for Jack to sign some more papers. Jack invites Allison to the mall with them, and when she brings up that she has to watch her daughter, Jack invites the daughter as well. Come on along. The three arrive to the mall, and through Jack, Lucky begins to buy a whole set of dog-friendly furniture and every toy in the pet store. Um, during the pet store visit, Jack meets up with Allison and her daughter. Jack signs some more papers. They leave the store and head over to the food court. At the food court, Jack is about to ask Allison out on a date, but before he can, Lucky becomes excited about Wonton Tommy's restaurant and possesses Jake yet again. But before she sees too much, Allison and her daughter leave. Jack and Lucky order every menu item from Wonton Tommy's and gorge themselves on the food, after which they raid the rest of the food court before being escorted out of the mall by security. Sometime after, back at the mansion, all of the stuff that Lucky... Lucky... Lockheed Martin... Um, all the stuff that Lucky bought at the mall is being delivered. Dog toys, steaks, asho turf to carpet the home, anything that a dog could want. While everything is being delivered, Lyle, Margaret, and Reuben show up to see that the mansion is being remodeled for the dog. Margaret decides to try to strike up a deal with Jack for the fortune, using, as she puts it, her irresistible charm. This woman is a troll. Um, she walks up to Jack and Lucky to talk. However, Lucky becomes angry, possesses Jack again. Jack, while under his possession, possession, chases Margaret off the property while also biting and tearing the back of her dress. The house is then remodeled to how Lucky wants it. AstroTurf instead of marble floors, new dog-friendly couches everywhere, and dog toys up to the neck. Even though he has all of this, Lucky is still sad about the death of his owner. Jack plays with him a bit to console him and then decides it's time for bed. Lucky asks Jack if he can sleep with him that night, and Jack agrees. That night, while everyone is asleep, Lyle, Margaret, and Reuben break into the mansion with trank dart guns, attempting to, much more violently now, cause an accident to happen to Lucky. What follows is a few minutes of the gang shooting each other with the trank darts and causing a ruckus in the house, waking up Jack, Lucky, and Calvin. Because it's so dark, though, Jack and Lucky are able to chase them out of the mansion but are unable to see and identify the intruders. When asked by police the next morning to describe the intruders, Jack tells them that it was Lyle, Margaret, and Reuben. The police officer, however, asks how he knows that, since they couldn't see anything, and Jack says that he knows their scent, but he also understands why the police officer can't believe that as an explanation. Cut back to the gang with Mr. Fister, the gang has decided that they will use his services. Fister agrees to take the case, but now, since it's more complicated, he says, his cost goes up to 50% of the fortune rather than the pre-agreed 30%. The gang reluctantly agrees. Margaret calls Fister a slimy, sleazy opportunist, and Fister agrees, saying that he has a law degree to prove it. Back to the mansion, and Allison has come over to show Jack an upsetting news broadcast, say, showing, showing the gang saying that Jack manipulated Windsor to give him his fortune, and that they are suing Jack, and will prove that he is mentally incompetent and cannot trust, be the trust fund trustee. Allison tells Jack that she will represent and fight for him in court, and asks them if there is anything Jack hasn't or isn't telling her. Jack assures her that she knows everything that he does and they are ready to go to court. Cut to the courtroom because the justice system is instant in this movie. Uh, Fister calls everyone who's seen Jack possessed by Lucky to the stand, including mall security and Windsor's cooks. They make the case that Jack is crazy and shouldn't have Windsor's fortune. Additionally, Fister calls Jack's clients from the beginning of the movie who state that Jake, li or Jack, 
who state that Jack lied about being a dog psychic. Things are not looking for great for Jack as the court goes into recess. While in recess, Allison scolds Jack for not telling her about the dog possessions and decides to give up the case. Jack tries to change her mind and has the idea of Lucky possessing him while he's on the stand to prove that he is a psychic and not crazy at all. She agrees to this crazy plan. My cat has just taken underwear out of my room and put it right next to me. I'm... I'm getting sick of this. He is called to the stand, but for some reason, Lucky isn't able to get worked up enough to possess Jack. Fister then starts to scold and make fun of Jack. This is enough to get Lucky riled up as he takes possession of Jack. Allison quickly, quickly jumps to have Jack face the jury and Lucky face away. She then asks Fister to show Lucky an object and Jack will be able to identify it without seeing it. They do this for a few objects and proves to the jury that Jack is able to psychically commune with dogs and even be possessed by them. Lyle, while behind the plaintiff table, puts an antacid tablet into a cup of water. This causes Lucky to have a flashback to the night of Windsor's death while still possessing Jack. He remembers Lyle putting poison into Windsor's teacup, the one I told you to remember, before Lucky asked Windsor to go on a walk. Jake immediately, Jack, Jack, Jack. Jack immediately snaps out of the possession and confronts Lyle about this, to which Lyle pulls out a gun and shoots Lucky. Dave, did you hear that? This is a Disney Channel original movie, y'all. <laughs> he pulls out a gun and shoots the dog. Movie over, the end. Togetherness, the two of us together, it's the only place to be. Togetherness, no matter what the weather, you can... No, I'm just fucking with you. Um, Lyle is subdued. And the gang and Fister are taken out of the courtroom. The gallery and the jury rush to see if Lucky is okay after being shot. And he's unresponsive. After a moment, however, Lucky springs back to life, having only been grazed by the bullet. Shoots a dog. <laughs> anyway, Lucky springs back to life, having only been grazed by the bullet. Uh, Jack and Lucky presumably win their court case. They don't have like a you won thing or anything. But cut to some time later, and Jack, Lucky, Calvin, Allison, and her daughter are celebrating their win in court. They're celebrating their win. Jack and Lucky get to keep their fortune. Jack seemingly has asked Allison out because they seem romantically involved. Now, that's never really addressed. Um, Allison's daughter has a new puppy, and everyone is happy. The credits roll. And the movie ends by playing the original song about Lucky the dog, which you should be hearing now. Togetherness, the two of us together. Um, so, yeah, so that's the plot. I gave the plot, I think, six out of ten. Um, where's my burn book? I've got it somewhere. So I've got my Mean Girls burn book here. Um, so get off the cord, bro. Come on. Ow! That's... Mm. I have three cats. But I don't live alone. <laughs> um, I gave the plot a 6 out of 10 because I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Um, so that was the plot portion. That's the longest scripted part. We're going off book here, baby. Um, the next category is acting. Um, I give acting five out of ten. If if zero is it, <laughs> if zero is the kid from Anchorman two, and ten is um I don't know the Revenant. I never seen that, but I know Leo won an Oscar for that because he like actually s slept in a bear. So ten being that, and five being the fucking dumbass kid from Anchorman two. Um, the the, mo the acting in this movie gets a five, so we're right on average. Um. I, the, the, everyone in this movie has acted in Hollywood before. They've all been on sitcoms. They know the drill. It's just a sitcom, but it's an hour and a half long. So it's, I'm not worried about it. It's, it gets a five. Dialogue, five out of ten. If zero is uh, two babies talking to each other and ten is, uh, like, the best dialogue ever, this guy's also get a five. It's a fucking decom. Like, what do, you, what do you expect? These categories will be better and more flushed out, I'm sure, later. But, like, now is we're, like, establishing a baseline. Um, editing and pacing. 7 out of 10. This movie had me engaged the entire time. There was no point where I'm like, oh, this is too drawn on. Or that didn't get explained enough. Nope, nope. It was perfectly paced. Hour and a half made for TV movie. Uh, they did it great. Uh, even though I've said perfectly, I only gave it a 7 out of 10 because it's not Die Hard. 10 is Die Hard and 0 is uh, Birdman. 
<laughs> Birdman won an Oscar, <laughs> I, I think anyway, and that's bullshit. That movie sucked. Uh, but editing and pacing, um, this gets a seven because it was pretty darn good. Not Die Hard, but not far off either. Um, soundtrack, seven out of ten. So there's that part where uh, Jack and Lucky uh, like start to destroy the house, and they've got this sound. They got I don't know if it's an original or not, but the whole score is like the mask. When Jim Carrey gets into that club the first time, like that big band brass stuff. And it was, it was just like, it, it's such classic decom, I feel like. It's classic Disney single cam sitcom in general. But like, it was just so fun. And I, it was at that point where I'm like, the rest of the music in this movie could suck shit. But that one part was so good that it like, seven out of 10. Oh my gosh, couldn't even believe it. Um, and then we've got a score for originality. Originality, I gave four out of ten because it's, this is Doctor Doolittle, but he can only can. This is Doctor Doolittle essentially, <laughs> but he can only talk to the one dog. He can't talk to all the dogs. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, so originality, zero being boy meets girl, and ten original being. I don't know, like something really, really original, something I've never seen before. <laughs> That's ten. So this gets a four. So ideally you want to have a better score on this, but it's a four guy talks to dog dog goes on misadventure. And then that that's pretty much it. Um, I liked it. I had a really good time with it. Um, hold upness. So this category is how well does this hold up in current time? Um, I gave it a nine out of 10. Um, I feel like a current there's so there's that scene and it should be playing behind me there's that scene where jack runs up and like tears the back of the lady's dress off like lucky has possessed this guy's body um but that's still sexual assault <laughs> so like by 1998 standards oh that's funny silly goofy um but that's still sexual assault like that would be he would he would at least get charged with something for that um so that deducted one point. Otherwise, this movie holds up just fine. So nine out of ten for hold upness. I would show this to my children. I watched it as an adult and had a good time. So okay, so twenty years ago it would have been twenty eighteen. So more than twenty years ago this movie came out. And even though it was in like a four three aspect ratio, I still had a great fucking time. Um, so I took all the categories, I added them up, and then I averaged them out. So this movie gets a whopping six out of ten. And now I will play you some of my favorite scenes from the movie. Bling. According to the will, the only way to dissolve the trust is to prove that the trustee, Mr. Jack Morgan, is mentally incompetent. He claims to be a dog psychic. What more proof do you need? Can you do it? <laughs> of course. Relax. If it takes me more than a week, I'll retire. But it's going to cost you. How much? 30%. What? I think he said 30%. Why pay that greedy attorney millions of dollars when we can handle the problem ourselves? Yes, yes. If lucky becomes unlucky, the money reverts to us. You mean all we have to do is change the dog's name? No. It's two in the morning. You got nothing to do. All of a sudden you remember, there's a bone buried in the yard. I can dig it up and chew it to pieces. You're nothing but a dirty, filthy, disgusting young man. What did you say? Stay away from me. There's something I've always wanted to do. I'm warning. Lucky finally realized all the dogs at the pet shop were for sale. <laughs> Just what we need, more dogs. So yeah, those are my favorite scenes from the movie. Um, next up, I think, okay, so this video is not going to gain any traction. And so if like people do watch it, that's crazy. So if you watched it and made it to this part, can, I'm torn. I want to watch them all in order, but I also don't really give a shit. Like... If I watch them all in order, it'll be six years before I get to High School Musical, and I don't want to wait that long. Um, but I could do them in, like, another order, or I could, like, pick three, or I could do, like, a random number generator, which would be kind of sweet, actually. Um, 
But if you have like a, if you guys can think of a good preference as to like how should I watch these movies, uh, let me know in the comments or like if there's one you really want me to do. Uh, this review is shit, obviously. It's why I'm doing it like this. Um, but I just thought it'd be funny to tickle everyone's nostalgia bean, nostalgia nerve, um, and uh, do some decom original movie reviews. These will get better as I keep doing them, I'm sure. Uh, but I just wanted to knock the first one out so I could say that I did it. And continue on from there. I'm rambling on at the moment. If you like the video, subscribe. Um, if you didn't like the video, don't fucking let me know. I don't want to know. It'd ruin my ego here. Um, but you could leave a comment, though, telling me how much you hate me. I'm sure it's good for engagement. And leave a dislike. Again, I'm sure it's good for engagement. But if you like the video, like and subscribe. Um, I'm so used to other YouTubers doing this. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's all I have to say. Um, thanks for watching and, uh, catch you on the next review there.